Hi, my name is Sam, and I'm going to take you through a tour of our music department at Garden International School in Kuala Lumpur. Let's go. So our department's built in a bit of a circle, a bit of a round. We have all the practice rooms in the centre and all of the classrooms around the outside. We've had some, some issues with storage, so we've got these great benches all around the corridors which we can use for just loads of stuff. So we have stands in here, we have drum equipment, we have all sorts, cables, wires. Uh, these rides are great because um, these are very sturdy music stands. We like these, you can't really break them. These are the kids to use. And the trolleys being on wheels means that we can just move them, move them wherever we need to. So we take them down to the pool for concerts, bring them back up, just use them wherever. We do have foldable stands as well if we need to go uh, and do a concert outside of school. But actually day to day we pretty much just use these for everything. So this is our instrument storage. We, uh, we have a lot of, particularly violins, a lot of instruments that we can hire out to students for their, uh, their instrumental lessons. So anything that's not hired out comes here and we get the instrumental teachers to come and check them every so often. Uh, it's quite a good space. We've got these shelves built so that everything kind of fits in nicely. A little bit of a mess at the moment. Um, typical, normal. Typical music <laughs> department. <laughs> mess but it's useful to have somewhere to put everything and keep it out of the way and then we can lock this door. So this room was a bit of a, a nothing room, it was kind of a, a storage room, a dump site so we've cleared it out mostly and we've got these two gamelan sets here which are absolutely brilliant so we come in here to teach gamelan for year seven for our GCSEs. Both sets are tuned to the C major pentatonic scale instead of their own individual tuning, which is really useful actually because we've been able to do some fusion performances with the gamelan and with the orchestra. Um, and this year we've actually set up um, a parent workshop series where each week a group of parents will come in, they'll learn how to use the gamelan, and we actually had our first parent ensemble play in a concert last term using the gamelan, which was really uh, successful and got great feedback in terms of engaging parents with music a little bit more. So we've got um, kind of eight practice rooms in total that we can use. Two of them are this size, they're a bit bigger, so we have drum kits in here. Uh, we use some small ensembles, bands, and then we've got a few smaller ones that we can use with piano, practice, duets, things like that. And we use them all the time. Honestly, we have all of our lessons. We're very rarely staying in the classroom. We're always out in the practice rooms making music. Um, and then we keep them open for lunch times, break times after school, and a lot of students will come and they'll just practice with their band or they'll kind of play their music, do some of their work. So it's always kind of a hive of activity going on. Um, any issues with uh, sound leakage? So they're not soundproof, but we do have this kind of sound treatment here, which does absorb a little bit of the sound and more kind of makes it sound a bit nicer and less echoey for the students in the actual room. Um, these doors are quite thick and heavy as well. So once you close the door, it does reduce quite a lot of the sound, which is good. Mm. And we've got some smaller ones here. We've got some smaller ones here. So we keep a piano in each room, mostly digital pianos and some keyboards. So we are here at the Music Hub, or Music Laboratory. So this is um, an old classroom, which we have repurposed into what we call the Music Hub. It's a space for our Key Stage 4 and Key Stage 5 music students, so those who are doing GCSE or A-level or any of our uh, elective courses to come and be here and use it at break times, at lunch times, um, after school, so they can come and do their coursework on the computers, they can come and just hang out and use the guitars, 
and the kit and jam. And we also use it for our sound recording elective as well and all our recording needs. So we had this little cupboard here, which wasn't really doing much. We got some sound insulation, a sound treatment put in and linked it to our little home so set up here. Kind of like a vocal booth. Yeah, slash. Kind of vocal booth, instrumental booth. So students can either record out there, uh, in there, out here. And we have two elective classes where they learn how to use all the microphones, learn how to record and produce music. But in here we've got our larger space. This is where we have most of our music rehearsals. Um, it's a little bit messy at the moment because we've just had a concert the other day. So all the stuff has just been brought back up from the hall to be put away. Very but normal. Very normal. <laughs> we, uh, we keep all of our orchestral percussion here at this end. Um, and that's always kind of available to be used. And then more of our band set up down at the other end with the drums and the piano and the amps. And we have everything in here. We have our orchestra rehearsals, jazz band, small band rehearsals. We use this room all the time at the moment. It's being used by one of our piano teachers, uh, using the grand piano to do some of her lessons. So we've got these guitar racks and storage here. Tell us a bit about those. Yeah, so we have two uh, Key Stage 3 classrooms. Both of them have these guitar racks in. Uh, and they're a really great solution if you're using guitars. We, we teach with them all the time. Um, and it keeps them nice and ordered. We have them all numbered. Each rack and each guitar has a number so the kids know put them back in the right place, same place every time, which keeps things in a good state, lets us know if there are any uh, issues that need to be fixed quite quickly. Uh, we just have to tune them once a week or so, and then they tend to stay in tune. We also have, beneath the guitars, all of these shelves and cupboards, which we can store percussion boxes, things like that in, just finding any storage solutions wherever we can. We tend to teach without tables for our Key Stage 3 groups uh, and just focus on the instruments uh, and the, the playing. And if we need to do any writing, they've got their iPads and they write on those. And then we have these movable tables. Which we can wheel in and out so that when we have uh, a GCSE lesson or an A-level lesson, we can wheel them out quickly, kids know how to set them up and then fold them away again quickly at the end, back to our key stage three setup in a matter of a minute or two. So this is primary music? Yeah, so this is one of our primary classrooms. Uh, we have three primary classrooms. Um, and again, we've got guitar racks for the smaller guitars and for all of our off instruments, as well as benches around the outside for the keyboards. Mm. Again, with primary, we don't have tables and chairs. Children come, they sit on the floor. They can do a lot of moving around and off and can die work. We have the boom whackers and the percussion, everything in easy reach. Everything's got a set place, so uh, all the children know where things are meant to go and where things are meant to go back. At the end, we have these media walls Again, storage solutions. Yeah. White walls in front of them, which is really useful. I mean, as with a lot of schools, Garden School is quite a small campus in a sense for a lot of kids, right? It is. We've got nearly 2,000 kids in a very tight residential space. Everything's kind of on top of each other. So it's about being uh, kind of innovative with, with the space we've got and how best to use it. Mm. So this is down on our, our primary level, but it's a recital hall used for primary and secondary music. It's a large space for kind of 
more intimate performances. So we use it for our regular instrumental music program recitals. We have a little stage set up. We use it for recording, um, sort of more professional recordings of our older students. We use it for workshops. Uh, we use it for running, again, clubs and music activities after school. It's been set up quite nicely with some sound treatment. Uh, and again, a false wall at the back with some sliding storage for all of our samba percussion and things like that. All right, here we are at the Hall, Garden International School Grand Hall. Tell us a bit about what goes on in here and what some of the features are of this space. Yeah, so this space is used for uh, everything from assemblies to sports classes to all of our performances. You can see we have the stage over there. The hall, again, has been uh, treated. A contractor came in and, and did some acoustic work to make it sound as good as it can, and it, it does sound pretty good. Actually, um, it's quite a large hall. So, in terms of chairs, one thing we have is these green um, riser chairs, and these are great because they're on a, a motor. So, whenever we want to have the tiered seating come out for all of our events, our shows, the, the musicals, uh, our events team can come in and they can have these set up in about four to five minutes. They just slide out. People can use them. There's nearly 300 seats across all of these and then if we need some extra we can put chairs out in front uh, and then at the end of the event they can be slid back in a couple of minutes ready for whatever else is going to be happening in the hall. So that's really useful. They can also come forward as well so if we're having a bit more of an intimate event we don't need as much floor space in front. The chairs can come out and then they can slide forward um, and it just feels a bit closer. We can essentially adjust the hall seating capacity to whatever event we are running. How do you go competing, I guess, with some of those other events that go on? Like we can see the courts marked on the floor. Is that, is that a bit of an issue for a very busy school or how does it sort of all work? Yeah, it can be. Um, again, I think the, the biggest kind of advice that we can give is, is, is pre-planning events as much as possible. So about this time in the year, we will plan out all of our events, calendar them for the following year. Um, and then there's a bit of back and forth sometimes with, with um, other departments and changing dates to make sure that fits and then getting things booked in advance as much as possible. Um, but day to day, unless there are sports lessons going on, actually you can often get in here so our A-level students will come in here to practice on the piano to get used to the piano for their recital in a couple of weeks um, and there's normally a point in the day where they can get in here and do that. 